Welcome back, everybody, to another long-awaited Cedar Flags episode. This episode is going to be the longest video I think I've ever put out. If not, it's going to be dangerously close to the longest video because, frankly, we probably bit off a lot more in this episode than we needed to. We could have probably broken this up into about three or four different episodes, but I decided that this little train project was going to be all in one video for some reason. So I'm actually very curious to see what you guys think of this video. And I'm going to be digging through the analytics on this one to see if you guys are tapping out at any point or if you guys are going to stick around for the entire what could easily be an hour long video. When you think about it, that's almost like halfway to a feature film. So whatever. <laughs> anyway, what we're doing in this video is filling this very awkward space between Alpine River Rush and the main little pathways that we've had. We've talked about this for a while now, but we've definitely always wanted to do something with this space. And I decided to put a train in here. A train was kind of requested near the beginning of this series, I believe, a few times. So we're actually going to go ahead and put one in. Now, the plan for the train is that eventually it's going to take guests all the way to the back of the park. For now, obviously, we don't have a back of the park. So what we're going to be doing instead is just kind of looping this back to the station. And it'll just be kind of like a little bit of a uh, fun, gentle ride for guests if, if they want to go experience the park. So that's basically what this is going to do for us. For now, um, what you're seeing right now on screen is a lot of the little terrain edits that we have to do back by the uh, roller coaster back there. Uh, that's all subject to change, and to be frank, it's not even done yet back there. It's all very basic uh, edits back there. So we have a lot of work to do yet on this track, even though a lot of this is very subject to change, especially the track that returns back to the station. So this episode, we're doing a lot of permanent stuff in, but a lot of the train track stuff that we have to do right away just to get this ride kind of functioning and operational here, uh, this is all subject to change. So uh, if you're trying to make suggestions about what the track should do or what that kind of stuff, if you're thinking of those, just know that that is going to change at some point. But we are going to keep the station where it is because we do a lot of work around it. And I am very impressed with how this comes out. I thought this was going to be a very, very challenging little area to build in. And I wasn't wrong. It was extremely challenging. But I think you guys will see if you haven't been to the live streams and don't know what's going on already, you'll see that we actually make use of this spot. And I think it ties all of these areas together fairly nicely again i don't think i'm very great at keeping like a consistent style and building that throughout like a whole area of the park just yet i'm still trying to get used to that and i'm still trying to work on that but uh it, it's just something that i think will just come in time as we keep building and as i keep figuring out how to make things look uh good and i think that is gonna actually get i, I think i might get a little bit better with that as we build different styles. So at some point, I'm going to know what I'm doing instead of just trying to find pieces that uh, just kind of fit well together. Uh, speaking of fitting well together, what we're doing with these stone walls here is actually building a bit of a retaining wall. So as you saw, we went ahead and dug down an area for this train station. This was pretty much the only way this train was going to work in here because I really wanted the train to go into a tunnel under that main path. Now, I didn't want to have to build like a crossover where the path crossed the tracks and all that kind of fun stuff because we don't have a way to block pedestrians just yet uh, temporarily. So there's no like train gates. Hopefully that comes in due time. But until we get that, I wanted to stick with that tunnel. But the change in elevation left us with a very, very strange cliffside that we obviously wanted to do something with. So what we're doing is building this awesome retaining wall. And I say awesome because I love the kind of intricate work that went into this with these little iron. They're <laughs> ironically, they are actually uh, railroad ties that we're putting down here, but we're turning this into like the metal work that is on this little wall here. So a lot of different angles being put together here and we're just making what's gonna look more like a three dimensional uh, metal craft than just a straight flat piece of metal that was thrown there. So it actually looks like there is some rigidity and structure to this. So that's really what we were going with. And I love the little 
minute details, the little braces that we used in the, the bridge over by Alpine River Rush, actually. Uh, brought those back, and of course these little cross members that we're putting in here, uh, it all really looks very good. Now, the one thing about this particular spot or this particular project, this this episode has got very many like mini projects in it. This particular project, I was really struggling with the bottom of that wall. Now, you may have seen briefly that I was trying to put some roofing pieces there to make some sort of structure down there. Something originally I thought maybe some roofs would work because it would add sort of that like angle to it. But in the end, we actually simplified it. And I that's one thing that I always try to learn something from recording these episodes and I think one of those things from this episode is that sometimes the simpler solution is the better solution so we actually just went back and put a concrete wall at the bottom there and I think just stepping back it looks pretty awesome it looks kind of reserved and minimal but it looks like it is actually structureful if that's a word uh, but yeah I, I that's what I kind of wanted to do here and of course as I've been building this you may have noticed I've only been working on this one little section of it I made this repeatable so actually I should probably put this on the uh, workshop for you guys as a separate built building entity but yes it is a repeatable thing and then to break up kind of that repetitive pattern we just kind of went in with all of this ivy work and randomly threw it in there so in the end it is very repeatable but that ivy breaks it all up a little bit so it looks more natural so it looks like there's maybe not so much of a pattern going through this whole area and i really love how this wall came out now of course this all had to go in at kind of an angle i really didn't want to put a 90 degree turn on this wall so you're seeing me kind of put a bit of a i think it was about a 45 degree uh, that uh, honestly wasn't gonna work for us. So in the end, uh, it I think it is close to 45 degree, but uh, there is a little bit. You'll see when we get to the third section of the wall that we couldn't really go straight across at another 45. So there was a little bit of wiggle room with this, and of course I had to delete a lot of the path work in there to get this all to work. Now deleting pathing is always very scary because you never know if it's going to get back into the same place that it was in. Uh, that's one of those things that I've kind of gotten over now. I figure if it's going to be worth doing, it's going to be worth doing right. So if you have to delete the paths and then you have to, I guess, you know, like go through the trouble of trying to get them to work correctly again for you, it's going to be worth it in the end. You really don't want to have to like force yourself to build around a path. You want the path to try to build around you, if that makes sense. And of course, that takes a lot of struggling. You'll see here and there, I've been really trying to put these paths back in and it was really giving me a hard time for a while. But in the end, it all works out. The one thing that was really weird about this particular pathing was that you needed to be able to get the terrain down behind the retaining wall but you couldn't do that and put the path in. So the terrain had to kind of poke out of the retaining wall. You had to then go in and put the path in, and then you could kind of shape that terrain and shave it back underneath that retaining wall. So it was kind of annoying, and you'll see spots here and there that I couldn't really, like some of these corners here, I couldn't really get that to work. So we had to go back again and try to get that path out just a little bit. And it was kind of a headache, but in the end, it's definitely worth it. And I think it comes out really well. Now, you may have noticed that I put a curb piece on the bottom of the retaining wall on the top side of that, if that makes sense, where the, the path is. This is to keep people from walking on the retaining wall itself. So it's kind of just there as a preliminary thing. We've seen people in this game walk in very strange ways and clip through things. So I wanted to pre prevent that a little bit. So hopefully it's all working. I haven't noticed anybody uh, you know, floating over the, the walls or anything. We're actually going to do a bridge in this episode, too. Uh, not fully detailed, but we are starting a bridge. And I one of the things that I wanted to make sure of was that people weren't going to float down for some reason. So uh, it's, it's one of those things that I'm still trying to get used to all of the pathing in this game. But I feel like we're getting there. And the more I play around with it, the more I've kind of learned how to manipulate the pathing the way you need it to. 
uh, what we're doing here is actually replacing one of the beds that we had. Now, we had a small little area where we had uh, uh, some rocks in there. It was pretty random looking. So what we're doing here is actually creating more open space where we're actually landscaping through here again. And I love the way this little bed comes out. I love so much stuff that we do in this game. I know I probably say it too much, but there's so much to love when you build these small ornate areas and you put this much care into them i it's this little bed here is awesome we raised some of the area up and we've built that up and you'll see this a lot in landscaping i actually worked landscaping for a summer so i kind of was around some of this stuff but you'll see that we raised the middle up and we kind of it looks like we built a bit of a mulch bed in there but then around the edges where the pathing wouldn't let us raise it up We've kept it flat and we've done some planting and then we've put these rocks in here as a bit of a retaining wall But the cool thing about this is that all of the mulch kind of flows back into itself So there's not a full retaining wall around this area. So it, it really creates this awesome little Area and kind of cool little shapes there So we're actually gonna bounce over here now to the bridge that I was just talking about and we needed a way to get people across now I think we had a preliminary bridge in here for a few episodes uh, When we were building the Alpine River rush area and that was just to make sure people could get over here now This is gonna be more of a permanent uh, Solution over here this whole like level changing or the elevation changes over here is kind of interesting in the way we need to path all this stuff and i'm still not entirely sure how we're going to recover from this and meet back up with the path that was a whole different thing we actually get a set of stairs in place in this episode so it's not like a big deal where we've built and basically this this uh bridge anything from this bridge over to like the rest of that retaining wall that whole area is built by the end of this very long video so uh it was kind of a big feat of engineering or building or whatever you want to call it but um we still have a lot of other work to do and of course i'll show you guys that in the live portion uh there's gonna be a few more challenges with all of the pathing down here and then this really weird valley that we've created for the train track so again we'll talk about that but this bridge I wanted to talk a little bit about um, it was something that I didn't really want to build like a massive custom bridge like we did for the Alpine River Rush that wooden bridge is awesome don't get me wrong but I really didn't want to have to do another really ornate bridge over here luckily we have some of these stone brick pieces and the ones at the bottom of the bridge right there really work well for this I love how this like all takes shape and it was kind of a little accidental like, uh, I think I was having some people from the uh, Twitch chat helping me out when I was building this, and it all just works. Like, these little pieces kind of mend together really well. It looks kind of, I want to say more like an English-type bridge, something you'd see over in England. But I love it, and it's so simple that it actually saved a bunch of time in building. So, uh, yeah, anyway, we're going over now to the tunnel, which kind of ties back toward that bridge because of these arches. So again, we're trying to tie some of this back in. This tunnel was another thing that I thought was gonna be a very big pain to do. Originally, I was thinking of doing a tunnel in the same way that we did the lift hill for the Alpine River Rush, but then I saw this little arch piece with the same brick again, for uh from that retaining wall and this piece works really well over here so there's i was having this debate with the uh live stream chat about train tunnels and we all kind of came to the conclusion after a while that uh the small tunnel is fairly realistic here a lot of times with trains they'll go through tunnels and it's not like they bust out the side of this mountain and have this massive open space for a tunnel. A lot of times the tunnel is just barely big enough to get a train through. So this is actually what happens with this train. So I, I again, it saved a ton of time in detailing this. And really all we had to do was a little bit of detail work around the entrance area. So uh, that saved a lot of things from a lot of headaches and stuff from me and frankly probably some frame rate too but it's one of those things that i've been trying to not put as much detail into stuff that's not going to be like a marquee piece of the park so the train tunnel while you're going to see it from the outside a little bit you're never really going to see it until you're on the train and you're never really going to see it 
and I, I guess even on the train, you're not going to see it very long, and it's going to be whizzing by you, and it's so close that you barely get to look at any of the details. So it really wasn't worth, in my opinion, putting a ton of time into a custom tunnel down there, and it all just kind of worked out really nice. Now, of course, right to the left of the tunnel, that was kind of a weird sentence, but uh, directly to the left of the tunnel, if you're facing it, uh, is this really cool little plaza that we decided to build. Now, this area, again, very, very tough to try to get this all looking good. There are so many layers to this onion, if you will, and it was just so hard to figure out what to do. And it was one of those things that as it took shape, it seemed to kind of piece itself together in my mind, and it was just a matter of execution. And I think we end up coming up with a pretty good execution of this area. Of course, you guys are gonna have to let me know in the end with a thumbs up or thumbs down if you liked it, but uh, it's one of those things. This little plaza, I always kind of wanted some sort of plaza over here. I knew we weren't really gonna have enough space for much of like a walkway, and it was gonna be really awkward to try to connect it up to this path that we're working next to right here. So what happened is that we put that little plaza down and then we uh, go in and we put some of the shops down. So we actually have some food stalls down there and it ends up looking pretty good. So we have a ton of seating area here for people to go ahead and eat and just relax. And it's kind of cool because it's kind of a little secluded area. So we're doing all of this uh, landscape work up at the top here, putting some planters in, getting some of these uh, little hedges down, which was another chat suggestion. I, I didn't really know what to do with this area, but someone suggested to do some of those hedges that I, I think I forgot about for a while there. So we put some of those in. It creates a really nice little line and it's kind of like a railing without needing a railing or a fence there. And then of course we create this really awkward kind of looking bed and then fill it with some of those ground cover plants that I love oh so much in this game that we desperately need more of. But this little tree, or it's not even a little tree, it's a big, I think, oak tree that we put in here. And it's a, uh, it's cool. It creates a lot of shade for this area, as you can kind of catch here and there over those tables. And then what we're doing back here is going through and making another little planter. Now, this one is actually going to be encased in walls instead of just like uh, hedges there. But this one is cool. I, uh, I think I worked with the chat again for this idea. Someone gave me the idea to put some taller hedges down on this and it looked okay. And then stepping back, it almost looked a little too much. And I really, I, I had talked about it when we first built the Alpine River Rush station. I wanted that to be kind of visible from the main path. So I didn't want to like completely eclipse this with some, uh, you know, taller trees over here. So we just tried to add a little bit of flair. And the interesting thing about this is that if you're down on the path, you can't really see over it to the plaza where there are all those tables. But when you're up on the main path, you can still see over that into the Alpine River Rush station. So really this accomplished both goals and it comes out really nicely. Of course, I, uh, I wanted to do something to fill this area. So I ended up putting those hedges in as sort of like a planter base. I, I originally tried that little waffle textured uh, piece that we have and it really didn't look as good. So in the end, we have a nice amount of greenery in there. And then of course we had to go and try to figure out how to connect all this up. Now, this was a pain. I actually, uh, I had to stop streaming and like, it was one of those things where I had to take a break from this and then come back with a fresh set of eyes and try to figure out how we were gonna make this work. So in the end, you saw we actually deleted a lot of the path work around here and we moved that planter with the tree a little bit closer and we've kind of squared this whole area up. Now, the hardest part about this was trying to get a path to connect down to the lower level. In the end, I really wanted to have some stairs and in the end we get that, but it is a little bit awkward. I'll address that, I guess, in the live portion. It's not like anything glaring, but it's just a little bit awkward as I think all stair projects in this game are, <laughs> just to try to get those stairs to work out properly. but. Uh, it works, and I'll show you guys that, but uh, of course we had this very awkward cliffside again, and it wasn't big enough to do another retaining wall like the one we did on the other side, but we just continue this planter all the way around here, and I feel like this is a really awesome use of this space. I think it creates a really awesome little 
separation of these two spaces here. So you have the main path that everybody has to walk down. And then really, if you don't know that there's seats over there, if you didn't see it or if you just you came from a different direction, you're never really going to notice it. But once you get down there, you'd never notice the path over the top of it. So it's a really cool little area. And it was just a lot of hedge work and trying to get all of these walls to work. And it's it's one of those things like there are it's so hard to get angled buildings to work in this game properly. Luckily, there wasn't any sort of roof on this little particular thing, but we have, I think, like four or five separate building entities in this one little retaining planter right here. So it's one of those things that was, uh, you know, it's one of those buildings that you have to kind of build in chunks. And again, like I said, luckily, there's no no roof over it to have to try to get that all to work. Now, of course, we had this previously existing planter from the last episode and I wanted to continue that and it's also it's actually pretty cool here uh, we continued this planter all the way over and it kind of meshes right in with the other planter so it's a lot of plants going in here as a really awesome natural break in the path work but it's one of those things that carrying over that theme work throughout this area was kind of my focus here so we already had this built why not use it and it all just kind of meshed back into the existing planter that we did so there was a lot of that going on here and of course we just had to fill it all in now i of course had to go in and put some lights in that's one of those things this episode that i kind of remembered to do here and there i'm not sure if i put all of that into this time lapse but uh there were some lighting things that i did here and there and i still have a lot of lighting stuff to do in this park which is one of those things that i want to get around to i just never remember to but again, I may end up doing another uh, like just separate video on just lighting the park up in general. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. Well, I guess you guys can let me know if you'd like to see an episode like that. But what we're doing down here is using a roof tile to create a bit more of a plaza feel. I've been saying plaza a lot, but as you kind of probably know if you've played this game, Using just the pathwork to create a plaza gets extremely annoying. Uh, if you're not working with the square uh, building grid for a path, it gets super annoying. And this area down here wasn't conducive to having that square uh, plaza or pathwork done. So we have this kind of sharp angle. We have a couple rounded pieces here. And I love the way the rounded pieces look. It adds a lot of like cool depth to this area. But we had to use these roof pieces to create what would have been the cement or concrete, um, you know, ground, I guess. So there are actually paths under there. And we, of course, sank that roof piece down so it is actually like the floor. And people are going to walk over it and not clip through it too bad. But we needed to get these paths down here so we can put all of these uh tables down so it was kind of interesting and i actually am very happy with the way this all turned out because if you kind of step back here it really the way we put these tables down it makes it look like it's all one big plaza so you don't even notice that some of the area underneath that roof work isn't a path so i really love how that came out but anyway, we're moving on to some more pathing right between the uh, train station and the top layer of the Alpine River Rush side. It's all very confusing, but uh, this is all, I guess, kind of subject to change. You'll see more as we get, I guess, deeper into this time lapse. We're already pretty deep here. But as we move through this more, you'll see how the queue for the train actually kind of takes up a lot of this space. Um, continuing this path under the bridge is going to be one of the big things that we're going to have to figure out moving forward here. But before we do all that, of course, we have to finish this time lapse and all of the buildings that we are placing over here. So again, I mentioned this earlier, but we wanted to have some sort of, uh, food shops over here. So we're building a little tiny hub under this, uh, not hub, but tiny building under this, uh, oak tree that we have here. Uh, it was kind of an awkward space and I didn't want to have to really do too much to try to stylize that, that staircase over there. So this tiny building actually ends up covering a lot of that up. 
And of course we put a bathroom in here, even though I said we were going to put a bathroom in a, in a completely separate location. Uh, this is, ends up being a really awesome place for a bathroom and it should attract a lot of people down here to, you know, go do their business. And hopefully while they're down there, they'll be like, oh, you know what? I kind of need some food now. So they'll be able to buy some food through here. Now, this isn't the only food stand that we're going to be putting in. You actually see another one placed already. That is temporary. We're going to be changing that up. But I think in total we get, I, I believe, three food, food and drink stalls down here. So we have three shops on top of those bathrooms that we place in. And again, this is one of those little buildings that I was trying to kind of tie some of that Alpine River Rush uh, Q Station style into. Uh, I, it's one of those things where I'm, I'm trying to use it as kind of a, a bridge piece. So, um, there was a little bit of elements from the Alpine River Rush building, and I tried to kind of incorporate the other buildings around it into it. Uh, it, I also tried to differentiate it a little bit, so after we kind of get these little, uh, roof pieces together, you actually see how we'll go ahead and break that down and make it kind of like an open roof concept, so I really love how that kind of evolved there but um it was kind of i don't know it's a it's a tiny little building not anything too special about it but there is a little bit of intricacy going on here and a lot of the the framing work that we do to make this kind of look more like a real building is kind of cool and then of course we go in and actually detail the shop a little bit out so that's one of those other things that i've I think i've wanted to try to do a little bit more so uh, you'll see in a moment here after we do some table arranging, I was trying to mesh all of those tables and kind of scatter them out to get that real big plaza look. But right now we're going in and we're actually going to do a little bit of styling in the shop itself. This is one of those things that you probably don't notice unless you get right down and into the park itself at like a guest level. But it was one of those things that I kind of want to start trying to do a little bit more here and there in this park. So we'll actually go through and cover the entire counter in wood. So it looks like there's a wood counter here. It fits really well. You'll notice a lot of the times in this game, the the shops themselves are themed in a very generic, like modern kind of feel, but you can get in there and put a lot of like the different feels of different themes in there. So we're using these little boards to create a bit of a counter or a shelf space or whatever you want to call it there. And we're using that to try to pull some of that generic theme out of there and make this more, uh, it's kind of a Western theme, but it's it's just the pioneer theme that I think we've been trying to go for. Um, speaking of pioneer theme, I feel like we're probably gonna wanna do more of this work over here. I'm not sure how we're gonna tie that in together with the future rides or whatever, but I think that's probably a goal uh, I'm not really sure. Like I've been saying, I'm not huge into like, I, I guess I, I want to theme stuff, but I'm not huge or I'm not very good in like trying to get themes to work consistently together. So I feel like maybe if we start using this kind of wood theme around this area, it'll pull this area together a little bit more. So moving forward. And again, I did try to say at one point that we we're going to do more like water park type rides over here not so much like water park or water slides but there are a few other different little water type rides. we still have a log flume that we can put in and another i think water roller coaster type thing that we could probably add to this area but it's going to be very dependent on how we go past that bridge so that bridge is going to be a big point of contention here so that's one of those things i guess i'll talk a little bit more about in the live portion because it's really hard to explain unless we're looking at it but um we're just building out this staircase here on this area here this was actually kind of tough to do uh i thought i got the piece right and you'll notice that i uh i think in the end it it's a little off the angle of the stairs is a little bit different than i thought originally so i actually had to go through and redo this a couple times i think i cut that out of the time lapse but the stairs i didn't want to put too much effort into i wanted to cover up some of that curb work there obviously but i didn't want to have to go through and stylize the stairs all that much i just wanted to get those hand railings on there because that is something that we would have had to have in like a real park. So this is kind of cool. Also, looking at these stairs now, 
I want to make a point to say that I've been trying to kind of keep like wheelchair accessibility as like in my back in the back of my mind so we're gonna need another way for people to get down here because currently the only way to get down here is with those stairs and we're gonna want more of a ramp access down here for people who want to maybe ride the ride but they don't have the means to walk down the stairs so that's something that we're gonna have to figure out under that bridge again but you'll see right now all we're doing is kind of filling up some of these awkward spaces with some planters here again Lots of planters in this area, but I felt like this was a really good use of space. And you're actually seeing me going in the nighttime for once in a time lapse. Yes, uh, just to put one single light down because for some reason I was like, that's a sign. It needs a light. And so that's what we did. But we're moving on across this little plaza now to what is ultimately going to be the train station building. But what started as this little shop area. So this is the building that was very very annoying to get done and uh we it was just there's so many weird angles here that we had to kind of work together and and just try to get everything to work properly of course nothing is ever that easy but what i was trying to do as you're seeing right now is put some sort of like little ticket window down here just because it's a train and you need some sort of ticket to get on the train Maybe not in a theme park so much, but I wanted to give that train station feel to this building. Now, eventually, I wanted to... Well, to start, I wanted to have these ticket windows facing the main path. Eventually, this whole thing is going to get clipped out. The ticket windows will remain, but they're only going to be in the queue. And this is one of those things. This building was very evolutionary. Like, there were many different steps to trying to get this to look right. And one of the biggest things that I wanted to do was if you kind of get an idea of where the stairs are, they're kind of behind, or I guess you can kind of see them here and there. They're kind of right behind where this ticket window was. I really didn't want to block the view of the train as people are walking down those stairs. So I didn't want to have that building come so far out. So we actually chop a lot of that off. You'll see that momentarily here. But we try to kind of cut that back. And it was another, again, it was that thing that I just wanted to have... You kind of have to think from the, the standpoint of your guests. Like, what would guests want to see? What would guests find appealing? So if people walk down those stairs and only see a building, they're going to be like, oh, that's just a building. I don't really have to care about that. But when they're walking down that those stairs and they see a train, they're like, oh, man, I want to ride that train. So that was really the thought process that went on back there. And uh, it's it's one of the, the shaping things of this train station here. Now, the station platform that we've been kind of working on here offered a really awesome spot to have some more nature work. And we're just trying to cram some decoration back here. The second half of this station isn't used whatsoever. So I really wanted to try to do something with it. So I put this little hen uh, the hedge uh little wall or whatever you want to call it back there and you're gonna see me put down a sign over here we're gonna to have to come up with a logo for that well I guess I'm gonna to have to come up with a logo for the uh, Alpine I, or the Cedar Flags train company I don't know you guys can I guess help me name this train or the train company or whatever we want to do I kind of like having like the train company as like its own thing that could be kind of fun to do there so um, you guys let me know what we should call the railroad, and I'll go ahead and make some sort of sign for that. I still have to make a sign for the Alpine River Rush and get a point of view video for that ride done. That is on my to-do list, but uh, until then, we're going to continue our build here. You actually saw me go ahead and cut that building over there finally, so that's kind of what I was rambling on about earlier. Again, it opens up a lot of space over here. And I really think it, it adds to the area by subtraction. It's one of those things that less is more, I think. And then uh, you'll notice the little TV station that we, or the TV uh, that we have on the wall next to the station windows there. I would really want to make a uh, train schedule looking thing there with our logo that we're going to come up with for this. And we'll put that in there as well. So the water tower was something that I had for the longest time tucked away by the Alpine Spirit uh, wooden roller coaster. We've decided to bring it over here, but ultimately we end up giving it the ax. Uh, it really didn't fit into this building all that much, and it was kind of just taking away from the area. So 
what I think I'm gonna do is either make like a train yard somewhere on the back of the park or just have the back station when we get around to making that have this water tower so it'll look more like a train station and I think that's good but you may have noticed that we kind of have our little clock tower and this thing was kind of annoying so the clock piece that we have I love the clock it's awesome the problem is that I didn't want to put it on a full section of wall so I what I ended up trying to do is put it on these little uh, half sections of wall that we have and the entire time I was trying to do this it really wasn't working and I was complaining I really want to get half sets of wall I really hope that ends up coming into this game at some point so we can do these kind of more into intricate little builds and it, unfortunately we don't have that so what we end up doing is use that little roof piece that we have and we build that up so the roof or the spire piece whatever you want to call it has its own wooden texture on it it's not the same wooden texture unfortunately but the clock faces do a really good job of hiding it and ultimately it looks fine when you step back you probably wouldn't have even noticed it if i didn't mention it but uh unfortunately i did anyway we're hopping into the roof of this building which was a bit of a pain so you'll know anytime you have to put like a curve or not a curve but like a slanted wall or, or just some sort of weird angle anytime you're not working in a square roofing gets very very tricky so it was one of those things that i was trying to figure out how to make this work right and it was uh it was kind of tough so we did this like slight angled roof with a bit of an overhang it's kind of cool because the train operator sits under it so it's kind of nice to have like a little space for him that's one of those things that i've been trying to like think about as well um is the little ride uh control panel i've been trying to think to or trying to remember to do a little bit more detailing on those so that's one of the things that we do here but uh the roof we end up making a little uh flat roof section and covering it up or trimming it out rather with these kind of decorative little uh fence items i think they're they're tiny little fences but they work really well as like a trim up in the top of this roof so originally i was trying to do this weird thing with this like angle and maybe make some sort of like gutter looking thing it really wasn't working so ultimately again less is more sometimes so i, I simplified it and we just end up putting the white trim on the top and the fences on top of that now i really like how this comes out but it I, I don't know we had to do a lot of work to get it to look right so we had the little ball caps on these fence posts they weren't necessarily fitting in with the style of this building so in the end we actually go ahead and trim those out with more posts so it all kind of fits together and then what we're gonna what, what we're gonna do is use this trim and this fencing area to kind of line out the queue of this station so it's all built together it all looks nice and i really like having this little clock tower um it's one of those things that clock towers i don't think get enough love in this game sometimes well at least i don't give them enough love uh, so i wanted to have this little clock tower and it makes sense because you know if there's a train leaving you want to know what time it is so you'll have to have some sort of means to know what time it is so uh what we do is put those clocks in and I believe they work like in game and actually show the time that it is in game. So it's kind of cool. I would have liked to have had a different style of clock face, but I mean, this is fine for what it is. I believe there's only one or maybe a couple, uh, like a small handful of different clocks in this game. So it's one of those things that we could probably use more of, but it's not like crucial to have. But uh, these little fences on the top here, uh, it was kind of hard to get it working correctly. You'll actually notice that they don't go all the way over to the edge. So that is one of the main reasons why we have these little uh, rectangular posts now hanging over these. But it also helped for some of this. I, I said something about the ball caps on it, but it also helped for spacing. So we could actually use the little, uh, you're seeing me right now, try to hide the fence in this post and it ends up looking pretty good and it, it works so what works you have to use right um anyway it was a little tedious but then again everything in planet coaster is a little tedious in the end it looks really good and i 
believe I cut out some of the lighting that we have to do here, but I actually go through and I put a whole spectrum of light under this. Well, I guess spectrum's not the right word. Each one of these little rectangular posts sticking out has a backlight to it, so when it becomes nighttime in the park, this area looks pretty cool. And I, I should probably show you guys what it looks like at night. If I remember to do that, I will. But here we go, putting the lights in now. Now this little gap that we have here, um, very scary when you first think about it. We have a gap in this roof and it's it's not square. <laughs> so what are we gonna do? Um, well, we're actually gonna just break one of these tiles, this roof tile off, and then we'll actually just curve it and sink it down a little bit lower. So ends up working in the end, but it's one of those things that it's, I guess it's a little trick that I've, I, I guess I picked up along the way or whatever. But um, we're just trying to trim out the rest of this, this little half wall piece. I, I think it's for the station. So if you're using uh, this little wooden piece around a station, you actually use those half walls to let the roller coaster or whatever out of the station. So that works and it all works back into the, the grid. But that little piece worked pretty well for this uh, little clock tower that we got going on here. And the rest of this is going to be just uh, detailing out this building with those trim pieces. Um, it, I don't know if <laughs> I, I, I don't know if this building sticks out too much around this area. It is. I tried to use the same. We actually used the same wood uh, paneling that we did for the Alpine River Rush Station. This is just the painted variety, so we're actually able to go ahead and put a paint on it. I hope it kind of fits the theme of this area a little bit, and I think it, I, I don't know, there's something about painting this that actually makes it look more like a train station. I feel like train stations at one point in time were always like the, the, the pinnacle of the town. It was the only way to get to town. It was the only way to get goods into town at some point. So the train stations themselves had to be upkept pretty nicely. Um, so I guess that was my kind of reasoning around painting this. And I think it would have looked pretty bad given like the natural wood color. But in the end here, we're just putting a Missy Good, Good Times Food sign down here. Uh, I was wanting to put some sort of signage on this building. And it just so turned out that the Missy Good sign looked phenomenal with the color. I think it just contrasts it just right. So it, it worked really well. And then in this building itself, where that little doorway is, we're actually going to have the shops. So I believe we fit two of those in there. And I, I think it ends up looking pretty good. But we're moving on to the queue of this train now. And we're using the little fence pieces, like I said earlier from the top of the roof as the uh, queue fence here. And it was kind of annoying to get this to work right, but in the end, it looks pretty good. You see, you saw me actually flip one of those over. I didn't want to have like those arches on the top because it was technically supposed to be a railing. So we flip those over, we get a nice smooth arch across the top. And honestly, I love the way it looks. Like it's got that, it, it kind of meshes together. So it's got that fence feel, but it looks kind of cool. And uh, in the end, it, it turns out pretty nicely over here. Now, this path was kind of annoying to try to get all of this fencing working correctly with. It curves. In the end, we actually slice those two tiles of paths off, and we just square them up and then add this as like a little space-saving area where we put down a roof tile, and then I think we put some props in there to make it look more like a... Uh, train station so uh it's one of those things that i guess we just had to fill this space and I, again it's always about filling space in this game i feel like there's a lot of times where you have empty space and if you don't do anything with it it, it looks like you just didn't take the time to do anything and it, it doesn't look like what a real park in real life would do so if you have awkward spaces always try to do something don't just leave it grass you can do grass, just make sure you have some like trim around it or some plants or something, and it'll look fine. But anyway, uh, the one thing that I want to say about this little fencing project that I had here was that it was really weird. Um, when you're working right next to a path, there is a invisible hitbox over the path for some reason. And it makes selecting parts extremely hard. And on top of that, when you have parts clipping through each other, it's just not fun to try to get like one single piece of that fence 
and it selected and then like move and do what you need to do it's just super annoying so it, it was just i don't know i'm just complaining at this point but um you just have to work around it and use your box selection tool to try to figure it all out uh we're using these same lights now and putting this around this queue station or the queue path to the station rather we're putting these lights down here to light up this area and we're using these same ones that we had up near the is it in the Alpine River Rush area, or is it just on the path near that area? I think it's just on the path, but uh, we end up using that. It's a, another attempt to try to incorporate some of the same influences down here. Try to pull all of this together a little bit better. And I guess moving forward, we're going to get... As we build more and more, I guess we're going to have more opportunity to blend styles together. So I probably shouldn't beat myself up too much if I'm kind of off style at points. And... Uh, just try to, as we build out more, try to blend things together using the similar parts that we've already used. But um, you're seeing a little last finishing touch on this cue path, uh, this little half wall that we do here. I wanted to keep this kind of, I mean, obviously it has to be secure. You don't want people running onto the station while the train's coming in. And um, you just want to keep it kind of secure. But I didn't want to use the same fencing that we did for the Q pass so I ended up with this half wall it was a pretty good way to tie in that station building because if you take a step back it almost looks like that station building isn't part of the train so tying that in with the same materials and the same accents was a really nice clean way to get this all looking like the same owner owns this whole area so it was kind of nice and then of course we had to go around and do a simple little detailing around here i didn't want to go too much into this but i had a few people helping me out in the live stream chat with colors because i am pretty bad at color matching and like trying to get colors to work together i never learned like color theory or anything like that is which is something i probably should learn but someone had suggested either making those flowers yellow or purple or pink and it in the end comes out really nice and ties this area together but finally the 45 plus minute time lapse is winding down here we are about to go into the live portion and guys i will see you over there all right guys we are live and a big shout out to you if you are sticking around through this very long episode anyway uh we did a lot of building in that time lapse and i am here to kind of show you guys around in a little bit more detail and then we're going to talk a little bit about what the next few episodes should be so let's go ahead and start where we started in the time lapse and that was i think putting the train down and then, of course, we jumped over to this awesome retaining wall that looks so good. I don't know if it necessarily fits any of the theming that we've done around this area just as as of late. But I, I think it looks really awesome. I love the kind of weathered stone look. And it actually worked really well because this little bridge piece that we got out of this whole thing um, works really nicely. But I think it looks pretty awesome. And I love it. It just serves a purpose it, well, it serves a couple purposes actually the first purpose is to stop people from jumping over this cliffside because that would be bad <laughs> the second purpose is it actually covers up that cliffside with a nice um, designed non-natural wall so artificial wall so yeah uh we had this really deep um little bit of an elevation change here and it's even deeper over here where the train has to go down actually this grade that we have on this train track is semi-realistic i had a bunch of people helping me out in the live chat telling me about how train grade and like all that kind of stuff is supposed to work so i think we got a fairly realistic uh change of altitude for this train it unfortunately as it goes through this mountainside it actually smokes out over this area here but 
that's something we have to deal with, but I think in the end it all came out pretty nice. And of course you're going to notice we have a lot of open space down here that we still have yet to detail out. That is probably going to be the next episode. Hopefully it's not going to be as long as this one. We're going to be a little bit more focused, I think. So we have a lot of detailing and probably just nature work type stuff to do around this area. So everything from over here up to the bridge and including the bridge is going to get detailed for the next episode. So this whole area we should be able to call done. Now the thing that we're probably not going to be able to call done is back here. This area is a little bit of a mess. Now there's not a lot that I really want to do back here. Obviously the train comes down through this little tunnel and then ends up over here. We took a lot of this terrain down and it's running right next to the Alpine Spirit roller coaster. That is something that I actually like a lot about this because it, it gives riders something to kind of enjoy as they're back in this kind of boring part of the park. Now, I don't want to go super detailed into like nature work back here. We're going to probably clean up. Some of these trees are floating at this point. We're going to clean that up. We're probably going to clean up some of the uh, cliff sides back here, make them a little bit cooler and maybe take some of this down a little bit and add maybe this could honestly be more of like a lake or something in here so we'll kind of work all that as we go i don't want to go hyper detailed back here because it's something that you're really never going to notice unless you're on two rides so we're probably going to try to keep the hyper focused or the hyper detailed parts into more focused areas where people themselves are going to see now speaking of seeing look at that segue um these i talked a little bit about and these are these little uh planters that we have here I really love the fact that if you're up here at person height, you can still see into the Alpine River Rush queue, or the station building, and into the queue there. But if you come down to uh, guest height down here, you'll notice that you can't see over this and into this plaza. So this plaza itself actually ends up getting some really awesome like privacy down here. So if you wanted to come down and eat a meal, you'd be kind of out of like everybody's hair you would be kind of secluded and you wouldn't have to deal with the massive amount of guests that would potentially be around you walking down a path so that was one of the really awesome little things that we did with this area and i love how it came out i mentioned this a little bit in the time lapse but it, it's kind of hard to like explain but these paths that we have down here obviously don't cover this entire area you just can't do that in this game with this path system unfortunately but what we did is we covered all this up with those roofs and then we spread out these tables enough to where it looks like the entire area is covered and people are going to be able to walk around this whole area. So I just, I love this little plaza. It was such an awkward space to try to figure out. It was just so awkward. I kept saying awkward, but it was just such a weird shaped space and there was never going to be anything easy that we could do with it. But in the end, I love how this all kind of comes out. Anyway, let's move on a little bit to this station building that you guys just saw in the time lapse. A uh, lot of just trying to get things to work on this building. It's not necessarily a special building by any means, but it is it serves its purpose. I love how it looks from up here. You got the clock tower. It's really the main thing that you're going to notice if you're up here. So that's actually kind of a good thing. Uh, you also notice the Missy Good sign there, but um, it gives people a 360 degree look at the clocks, which is really cool. And then, of course, if you get closer to this wall, you'll notice, hey, there's a massive train down there. I should go ride that. So that is uh, one of the really awesome parts about this area. Again, we have this sign set up back here. We're going to put something back here. You guys need to let me know in the comments what we should name our railroad. Uh, there's a lot of space here, so we could do like the, over here we have the Cedar Valley Brewing Company. We can maybe do like the Cedar Valley Railroad Company or something like that along those lines. I don't know. You guys are going to have to let me know about that in the comments. Now, I guess we should talk a little bit about this path since I did try to, try to tell you guys about it. It was really hard to figure that out. And this whole valley is subject to change. I said that many times, but... This path needs to continue, and I wanted to make this kind of a gentle sloping path back up to this somewhere. So there's not a staircase. I talked a little bit about handicap accessibility, and I want to kind of stick with that throughout this park. So I want this to gently slope back up to here. I'm not sure how that's going to look, 
And then past that, we actually have to do something with this valley. So I'm not sure yet, but I kind of almost want to do something with like a river through this area or something like that. Since we do have this water area or this water park over here already, it'd be kind of cool to have some sort of water down here and maybe have like a boat ride like the transport boats. So a lot of the train track is going to get pushed off. And I should mention that this train is eventually going to wind up probably back here. So I am actually planning on putting a hotel or a resort type thing back here at some point. Not really sure when that's going to happen, but that's going to be there. And it'd be really cool to have the train actually go straight into or adjacent to a hotel building. So that'll be cool to see. That is way in the future though. So for right now, this train is actually just taking people around a scenic little ride. And it's kind of hilarious because as much as I talked about uh, realistic slopes. This is completely unrealistic for a train. This is just temporarily here, so I didn't really feel like trying to have to, you know, get the slope just right with the right grade on it or whatever, but that is, uh, that. I think I've pretty much covered everything, and actually, uh, I, I hope I covered everything. There was a lot of, uh, things being said in the time lapse, so I'm hoping that I got to mostly everything I was talking about, but I did want to show you guys what this area looks like at night because I did take the time to start to do a little bit of some light work around here. And so yes, I think this looks pretty awesome. There's still a lot of light work to do. There's still a lot of work to do here in Cedar Flags, but guys, that's gonna be it for this very long episode. I apologize for that. I hope it was worth the wait. But, guys, if you liked this episode, leave me a thumbs up. If you disliked it, of course, thumbs down. I cannot wait to see what you guys have to say in the comments. And until next time, I'll see you guys back here in Cedar Flags.